I get a bunch of questions about the export in Studio One Three and how it works. Well, basically, the version that I currently work off of is the professional version. So when you guys see me talk or mention about the export function and, you know, how that works and blah, blah, blah. Right. That's because you see me doing doing it from the professional standpoint. So some of you guys, you know, may get a little confused and go and try to, you know, duplicate, you know, what you see me do and then notice like, wait. You know, I, I can't export or, you know, what is it that he's doing? What is it that's special that he's doing? Maybe, you know, there's some magic to it. No, it's just that that uh, all versions have different different things that they do. So if you have the prime version or the artist version, I believe that though the exporting function is not available or if it's available, it's only limited. You know, all of the parameters are not available to you. So if you guys need to export um uh mp3 or wave file or whatever other file you need you actually have to purchase the the add-on feature from personas you have to go to their site and um uh, search for the you know the for search for the add-on pretty much i believe you, you have to log into your account or whatnot and grab that so if you have the export functions available to you in your doll this is what it basically looks like now this is there's different there's two different exporting functions there is the, the regular bounce where you can bounce the entire song stereo to mp3 aiff file flag file ogg i have no idea what these are the um the og the ogg or the, the cf CAF. Now the CFF, I've seen that before in Logic. Again, I have no reason to use these files. The only thing I use is these three here: the Wave, the AFFF, and the MP3. But more so the Wave and the MP3. Now your Wave file would be more so, you know, your your bigger file for um, sending it to dis uh, distributed, you know, distribution. And um, this is, you know, the 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 highest quality exporting as possible and it also has something to do with your resolution you want to make sure that your resolution reflects the the quality as well and most of the times it's going to be 24 you can go to 32 that's totally up to you 8-bit would definitely crunch it down you know the quality won't be so great and you know this is also um, based on preference here the um the standard is 44.1 but i like to bounce down down at uh 48 kilohertz which is my sample rate but you can definitely go higher with no problem you know you have those options available to you and then you have the the bounce you know you can bounce within your loop range so currently as you can see right here i only i only have mines from five to nine but if i want to bounce down an entire song or just bounce down a certain area i can set my loop to that certain area and my loop doesn't have to be on which is pretty cool so like in 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 a situation where i forget to turn on the loop or turn off or whatever it really doesn't matter it just depends on exactly where it's located and it will bounce down that location which is pretty cool um you can also bounce the um the song between songs start to end you know like based on markers actually or between markers here or you can select the markers you can have certain markers and you know it'll pop up you know say you're working solely for markers that's pretty cool like it'll just bounce down it's almost like where your loops are you know where your loops you know the the bars that you have selected in this case it'll be where your markers are and it'll bounce between those markers so if i put a marker here at one and then put a, another one here at 10 or something like that it'll bounce between those markers and all i have to do is just select you know the markers that i wanted to bounce between and of course right here it will definitely give you the uh, duration it will change according to where everything is so my between my loop here that's about mm, it says it right here it's about eight seconds but if i was to go between the start and the end marker this is a four minute song and my end marker has to be happens to be way down here somewhere. I I don't, I don't know. I have I have to have the um the marker activated. It won't let me do it because I'm in this window here. Um, and then these parameters down here are pretty simple. You know, 
typically I'll leave it leave this like it is. Um if you want to bypass the master effects, you can you can do so. You know, that's that's an option there. And that's a really great option if you want to to, to utilize that. Also, um, you can bounce this down in real time. I don't know. Well, I mean, it's good to, to do it. If you wanted to do it that way, you actually listen to it and kind of catch any errors that may occur in your recording if you want to do it like that. But I typically leave that off because I want everything to bounce down pretty fast. Um, or you can import what you just or, you know, import what you're bouncing down currently. You can import it back into the track. So for some of you guys that just want to bounce down something real quick instead of, you know, going to the file where it is, you don't need to go and find it. It will just automatically import it back, and, you know, create a new track, which is something pretty awesome. You can also select this here, right tempo to the track. I'm not really sure how well that works, but uh, that's something that's another option for you as well. And you can choose to overlap, you know, these different parameters. Um, that you can choose. The only thing I care about is uh, this window closing after the export, and I leave this on just you know for the heck of it. And that's pretty much it. And if I need to go to MP3, you know this again, it gives me different bit rates I can uh, export between, starting at 64 all the way to 320. Um, same thing here, same process, nothing, nothing different. Um, the, the good thing about this as well is you can actually upload your track to SoundCloud. So if you have a SoundCloud account, you can go ahead and do it straight from from here with no problem, which is a cool feature. Um, yeah. And and I believe if you select this here, there is another, you know, another window that will pop up giving you access to log into that account so that you or matter of fact, I believe you set that up, you know, um, from from the studio one or the file, you know, one of these. One of these up here, you just click on it, make sure you set up your SoundCloud account. Um, the file name, very important. You can um, definitely customize this and make it say whatever you want it to say. I can make this say the name of the song, which which I prefer. And then you can select where where you want to save your file, which is very important as well. Now, the other window... Now that's just bouncing down everything in stereo. Now the other window is pretty cool as well. You just have to click up here to to song here, and you can export the mix down or you know the mix down. What we just is just what we what we were just talking about. But if you were to export your stems, this is what this looks like. Now this is pretty cool. Now, just by looking at things, you can switch from the channels, which means each track has whatever plugins you're using on that specific track. So it, could, it will come in with all of the processing on there, which is pretty cool. And if you have any bus or auxiliary channels, they will also show up here. I don't have any, but there's like a like a pitch for look at things sideways point to the right, I believe you know for the bus channel and you know that usually pops up here um you you can you can say all or you can say none and just you know be picky about what you want to, to export out or you can say active which means it's going to select the ones that are currently um active and the ones that are probably muted or you know like this one says muted you, you know you you kind of get that you know that notation off to the side of the um the name of the track here it won't select it for you which is another great feature so that means you won't be exporting any blank tracks which is pretty cool unless that track in your specific session doesn't have anything on it then it'll go ahead and, and bounce it for you and it will be blank you know so so this other uh radio button here the other option tracks now this here is specifically for exporting all your tracks without the plugins at all there won't be any you know if you, if you got a high pass filter on here or something like that it'll export everything down without the plugins and see the channels is for the plugins with the plugins and this here is for you know just straight raw everything come out you know just bare you know the original like it is 
And then over here is in this section right here, it's pretty much the same thing as I explained before. And you can, you know, select the, the location you want. The the prefix file name typically sets the name of the actual session, which in this case is danger. Um, you can um, customize it to say whatever you want to say. If you want all of your tracks to come out, the name, you know, specifically, you know, the name of each each track then you can just delete this and it, you know the only thing that will you know the only label on that actual audio file in that folder wherever you save it to will just be the name of the track so in this case it'd be slap slap smoke or buzz delay you know it'll only say that as opposed to danger dash slap mode or slap smoke you know whatever this is all right so Again, you can upload to SoundCloud, but why would you do that? I don't know why, because you have like a million tracks trying to, but that's just totally up to you. Some people do that. Um, here, the format, same, same as usual, nothing more to explain there. Um, usually for Wave, like I say, I'll keep it at 24, which is standard, and then I'll go for the 48. You know, 44.1 is, is also standard, but, you know, I usually just go with the 48. Um, to me, you know, it's, you know, quality that way. But use a preference all day. Then you have your, your you know, your export range. Again, there's a duration time down here, and it changes upon where you have everything selected. Okay, so now the options. The options is the same, but you have a few things that weren't in the other window. This is the preserve mono tracks. All right, so that's a, that's an additional thing, and I'm really not sure what the what this is for. I've I've really never never heard a difference when having this checked or on or not checked. But I believe that if you have any mono tracks, it will take that track and, uh, you know, and, and pretty much make it mono instead of stereo. That's that's what I'm thinking. Um, also, import to track, which means you can actually export all of this out and it can import right here at the bottom, giving you, you know, and that's pretty cool because, you know, you can kind of hear what everything sound like or do we more for furthermore sometimes i do that as well like I'll, I'll first get everything out and then do furthermore or whatever i may maybe rename them something else, something else because if i'm you know submitting this to an engineer for further mixing then i i'm a little bit more cautious to the name of the track you know something i know that, that would be uh more familiar or cleaning up anything that shouldn't have bounced out in the first place because you know they, there may be blank tracks or whatever you know things like that so and and you know and it's just a good idea you could probably do a little bit more gain staging you know to those tracks as they export out you know things like that um and then the rest of these pretty much all the same self-explanatory here and, and that that's that's how the um the exporting functions works you know again i have the professional version and i believe that if you have the prime or the uh or the free version well the prime is the free version or the you know the the artist version i'm not sure that these come with it you will need to purchase the add-on you know visit the personas website and purchase the add-on and then it will give you the ability and the options to export your tracks just as we explained in this video I hope that it was helpful to you guys. I, I always get that question and I wanted to do a video, you know, something official for you guys. So in case I get that question again, I can say, hey, I, I made a video spe spe specific <laughs> specifically for you. So here, here it goes. And um, again, if you have any questions, please feel free. Let me know. Remember, this is Ella and music is art. You're the artist. Paint your picture.